If you think it's time to take a hammer to your bathroom scale and rip up that diet rule book, welcome to Body Kindness. Hi everyone, it's Rebecca Scritchfield, author of Body Kindness and host of this podcast. I'm a health at every size dietitian, a certified exercise physiologist, a former chronic dieter, and a mom to two girls. Join me as I talk to guests about what it means to be good to ourselves and create a better life, where well-being matters, not weight. Through these conversations, we'll reveal the challenging and surprising ways our culture keeps us searching for our worth and our appearance. Let's create a new view of health that's inclusive and built on compassion. Let's shake things up a bit and let's change the game. Hey listeners, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. I am very excited to bring you a reading um, from my special guest today. Her name is Kimberly Dark, and she is a sociologist, facilitator, and yoga teacher. And I had the pleasure of doing my first yoga retreat uh, in January with Kimberly Dark, and it was amazing. It was in Hawaii, which was not a bad place to be. And it was also a retreat that was focused for helping professionals. It was called the Body Wise Wellness Retreat. So it was a five-day retreat, and we did yoga, meditation. We did reflective writing every morning. We shared meals together. We did um, adventures out in nature. It was really wonderful, and it was specifically for folks who align and working in social justice spaces. So for my listeners who are helping professionals who feel aligned with fat activism and health at every size, um, I think this is a really wonderful retreat experience. It certainly met my needs from both sides. I'm definitely one of those people who takes time for myself kind of in these short and effortless ways. So even in Body Kindness, I wrote about picking actions that meet the three S's, small, smart, and swift. (laughs) And, you know, there are times when it's just those little workable choices make a difference, right? Like the bubble bath, like lighting the candle my six-year-old daughter bought me and just smelling the beautiful aroma, but also remembering the smile on her face when she gave me that gift. There's lots of simple ways on a day-to-day basis where you can spiral up. Um, but then there comes a time in your life where you really feel like, gosh, I need I need to take a moment. I need to be by myself. And this was my first solo trip ever. I actually... It was a five-day retreat, but I actually went out about four days earlier. I wanted to acclimate to the time zone, and I just felt like I need like a solo vacation. (laughs) It was so magical. I can't even tell you. Just I remember the first morning waking up and, you know, having coffee, watching the sunrise over uh, the lava. I was staying in in a very sacred place that was on old um, lava flow in this tiny house. And it was just so beautiful and magical. Like when the sun was rising, it was like the lava was on fire again because it was turning orange. And anyway, it was awesome, right? And then I walk inside. I'm like, what do I do now? And then it was like, anything I want. Hooray. <laughs> and it was just so great for me. And you know, I feel very privileged and honored that I had the time and money um, to be able to go and do something like this for myself. It is also something that I plan to continue, whether it's more retreats um, that I really think are going to be personally helpful to me, um, which for me, it's not about weight or appearance or that sort of like thin Eurocentric beauty standard stuff that we see a lot of in the world of retreats, Um, but something that's really going to be about more meaningful and more inclusive. And it's really going to help me learn and grow. And I definitely got that out of the Body Wise Wellness Retreat with Kimberly Dark. There is also a retreat that she does uh, called Yoga is for Everybody. And so if you don't identify as a helping professional, body worker, therapist, yoga teacher, fitness teacher, dietitian, life coach, anyone like that, but you like the idea of yoga, uh, I would definitely check out her Yogas for Everybody retreat. All yoga levels are welcome. Kimberly is a fat yoga teacher, so she is going to create a welcoming space 
for any size body. She did want me to let you know that the retreat space for both of retreats is not wheelchair accessible. So if you have specific questions about mobility and ability, I would direct you to reach out to her. Her website is KimberlyDark.com and you can find a link to her retreats off the homepage and you can contact her from there. Anyway, what you're going to get out of this reading is an example of Kimberly's writing work. And it's a story about Marilyn Monroe and smiling and a story that she learned from her mother. And Kimberly uh, writes beautifully, but when she performs her writing, it's also very special. So I would encourage you, wherever you're listening to this now, go ahead and continue on listening if you happen to be in the car or running or wherever. But listen again when you could just sit there and hear every word mindfully and just like let yourself react to it and respond. And she has this magical way of teaching about sociocultural issues through writing and through her reflective prompts that she gave at the Body Wise Retreat. They were also really good. But I just think that this is a good opportunity to be introduced to Kimberly and her work. She does live events, not just in Hawaii, but also throughout um, the mainland. And so you could check her out there. Um, She's got several books out that you could check out. And yeah, just kind of, I would say, see, this is an opportunity where you can get a little taste of what Kimberly has to offer. And if you like it and you're in a position to think about doing something for yourself, think about a retreat. Maybe Kimberly's retreats would work for you. That's amazing. If the timing isn't right or the content isn't right, just think about the idea in general about what would it mean in your life to be able to take a pause and just breathe, right? Give yourself space and a pause to just be who you are exactly as you are right now. Um, that's why I'm drawn to things like yoga and meditation retreats. And in, in our conversation, I was telling Kimberly about how I'd kind of had this, created this damaged relationship with yoga. It started out, if you read in Body Kindness, I talk about how yoga helped heal my body image. And then just, I was really harmed by a lot of the yoga shred, you know, core power, heat, pushing it. And a lot of yoga practitioners who I speak to about this says, uh, yeah, that's not, that's kind of the sort of diet culture version of yoga and not what they can get behind. And I really felt that the yoga we did at the Body Wise Retreat was exactly what I needed. They were short sessions. Some of the sessions were meditative, but you could take it to different levels of challenging yourself. And that also felt good. So I would encourage you to think about if you were to consider taking time for yourself, what what is doable? Is it a day? Is it a day something local? And maybe research it. Doesn't mean you're going to buy it, right? But maybe research it and see how you feel about opening up your mind to that opportunity. Or is there something else that you think you would really benefit from from getting to push pause. I really felt that by me taking a week and having several days by myself, I just felt like an energy come back, a creativity and an energy. And like, it really felt like deep cleansing breaths, right? So I was able to go to the beach and look at beautiful waves, snorkel a little bit and just lay on a towel with my journal. And, you know, I've got two young kids, six and almost five. And so that feeling of like, I didn't need to worry about, did I have a snack for somebody um, besides me? <laughs> and it, it just was nice. It was, it doesn't mean I don't love my identity as a mother because I do, I deeply care about that. But it's also this, this idea that it's okay to take time for yourself and it's okay to have time away from responsibilities and to just to just be, be who you are in that moment as a different way of meeting your needs. Um, And if you get my emails, you might have read a little email about what I did on my last day in Hawaii. Um, (laughs) I'm giggling. If you didn't get it, get on my emails. So uh, let me tell you how to do that, bodykindnessbook.com slash start. And um, you can do the free body kindness course and then you'll get on my emails. But 
I will tell you what I did. There was a um, clothing optional beach right by the retreat. And it was interesting to watch how timid I was day one. I'm like, okay, I'll take my top off and then roll on my stomach. But eventually that last day, I was like, I'm about to board a plane out of here. Um, I feel like that there's a sort of deep spiritual cleansing that I could do if I just rip off my workout gear and head straight to the water. And I did. And um, I loved it. It was really fun and freeing. And yeah, just that idea of how clothes can even just, I mean, yes, we all walk around with clothes and that's normal and I'm grateful, but just the idea of that, how something as simple as when you have full permission to be at a clothing optional beach, what reservations you might have and what that might come from, you know, what kind of shame is there, modesty, and maybe that's not your thing. You don't ever have to take your clothes off at a beach if you don't ever want to, but it was an interesting journey for me. So Anyway, I am so excited to be able to bring Kimberly's reading to you, and I really hope you can relax and enjoy it, listen to her reading as much as you would like to. I'll have a link to the written version in the show notes as well as her retreats. And yeah, I would love to hear from you. If you have felt like you've been on a life-changing retreat, I would love to know more about that, um, especially if it's a retreat that's inclusive. I'd be super excited to hear your story. You can shoot me an email. It's Rebecca at bodykindnessbook.com. And um, I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe doing some type of a retreat. So I can kind of go in one of two ways. It's like I could see going to do sort of a one or two day like professionals body kindness retreat where it's just easy for people to come to get some support, inspiration, information, and motivation, all that kind of stuff. And then, but I'm also thinking about, hmm, it would be really cool to do a retreat in some sort of tropical place. So if you're like, oh, I think that's a great idea. Also shoot me an email and let me know because um, maybe I'll have to think on that a little bit more for myself. But in the meantime, Kimberly's retreats are great. I also know Fiona Sutherland. She's the mindful dietitian. She runs retreats as well. Um, also, Amber Carnes does yoga retreats, and I had the pleasure of meeting her at Kimberly Dark's retreat. So there's a couple names that, that can get you going. And thank you so much for listening and um, practicing body kindness. It means a lot. So, right. I have been doing writing for performance for the last 20 years, and I, th I think I think I've had 10 plays produced two educational performances over the last two decades. And uh, I have a book of poetry out called Love and Errors and also two audio CDs out, which are uh, available <laughs> now that no one has a CD player anymore. They are available for digital download as well. So, so yeah, when oh, I have a, I have a book coming out, um, actually I just was talking to the publisher today and I know now that it will come out September 24th of this year. And, uh, that, that is a collection of essays, um, called fat, pretty, and soon to be old. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's, that, that's me basically. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a book about appearance privilege and how, you know, how our various privileges and lack thereof intersect in, uh, personal and cultural ways. Um, so, so those are the things, uh, oh, and I also have a novel out called the daddies, mm. um, which is, which is about, you know, how we need to take down patriarchy, um, but told as a queer leather daddy love story, because you know, how else are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, and, and I'm also so excited. Um, the daddies just made it onto the American library associations, uh, LGBT reading list for 2018. So, so that's, that was a great thing that just happened this week. Oh, congratulations. I mean, thank you. I mean, it's like, you know, having people like the book is one thing, but librarians, I really respect. <laughs> <laughs> they really know how to read. So, <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool to be on that list. Cool. But, now, I had asked you earlier if you had a, a, a request for um, a story that you heard during the retreat. And I, being mindful that we want to pick one that's a bit shorter, uh, this is actually a poem, and, and it's one that I shared with you um, at the retreat. And it's about Marilyn Monroe and, and my mother. Now, of course, nobody knows my mother. I mean, unless they happen to, but <laughs> everyone knows Marilyn Monroe. 
And it's, it's the relationship between uh, Marilyn Monroe and my mother and me, and probably you too, that, that this poem is about. It's called Marilyn's Smile. I sympathized with Marilyn Monroe for her smile. See, my mother gave me smiling lessons when I was a child. I was older than when I received handshaking tutelage, but younger than for tips on feminine smoking, that's for sure. You have a beautiful smile, she began. Some people's mouths, they show too much gum above the teeth. You can fix that, though, if you're aware of it. I was in my bed, nearing sleep time. I loved her casual stories about appearance, etiquette, the way she took for granted that anyone could improve her appearance with just a little planning and concentration. Take Marilyn Monroe, for example. Terrible smile at first. She had to learn about presenting herself before she was so pretty and sexy. Oh, but that voice. You want to sound more natural. Not too loud, but not so breathy either. My mother lowered her eyelids and breathed out a line or two from the dead president's happy birthday song, imitating Marilyn. We laughed. I imitated as well. We laughed some more. See, Marilyn had to learn to roll her lips up around her teeth into a smile so they'd cover them, like this. She demonstrated, pressing her lips firmly onto her teeth and then peeling them back into a smile slowly. You know, it didn't look quite happy until she added the laughing, happy eyes. Wow, so much goes into a smile, I thought. And I pitied Marilyn, her diligence. I mean, if that's just the smile, how much concentration must go into the rest? Standing, walking, small movements of her hands, turn of her body at the waist. How much concentration must that take for it to all look natural for her? I wondered this as I drifted to sleep in my childhood bed. Of course, my mother knew the truth. Appearing naturally beautiful can be taught and learned, the knowledge bought and sold. And those new habits, they do become natural, just the way you are. So it was for Marilyn, I'm sure. Oh, but with that knowledge that she'd been so coached, my mother was jaded. None of that was natural. Couldn't everyone tell? Oh, but the trick was in planning to look natural. And this is what I learned in my childhood. Makeup to enhance the structure of the face, not embellish it. Clothing to hide what were called figure flaws, not draw undue attention to either hips, bust, or legs. A well-modulated voice presenting refined diction naturally. But what of the nature of the flawed figure, the loud voice? I wondered this through years of nonconformity. I wondered where nature resides, if not in these hips, thighs, and breasts, when all we do is somehow constructed for viewing by another. And really, we just make it look natural. I'm thankful now that the body does not always conform. It refuses to look natural, even as it is being pinched or cut. But then, my eye's view is still outside the norm. You know, they sold Marilyn's pots and pans 35 years after her death. The intimate contents of her household were on the auction block. Driver's license, ashtrays, dog-eared copies of her favorite books. These are the things that betrayed her natural life. And would anyone have cared if her natural life was all there was? Would it have been so unbearably voyeuristic to think of her holding this saucepan, wearing a terry cloth bathrobe and cooking soup for dinner? Or to... Imagine her sore and sweating foot emerging from a Ferragamo pump that you can now hold in your hand. Or pondering a book, 
which seems to prove she did read and think as she turned her head just so and cast her eyes down at just a 35 degree angle. Clap. <laughs> Thank you. I just love... I just love you in reading your stories. And I love that story in particular, just because it really just draws you in right to the, to connecting to the ways that we're, you know, taught to show up in the world and, and then your yeah. mom teaching it to you and then questioning it. And I, yeah, I just think a lot of listeners can really relate to all those just how through story, there's all these different questions that you could ask, you know, like, why do we do this? <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, you know, I think there's a whole lot about culture and about appearance privilege in specific that just becomes so normal to us that we don't even see it anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and so that's, that's one of the nice things about storytelling and about uh, the prompts that I use to try and help people recall things and moments where we learned what the culture wanted us to know mm -hmm. because, because that's, you know, that's where all of a sudden there's a loosening and we can get in there and tinker with what we really want to believe and how we want to behave. Because ultimately the thing about appearance privilege is that it, it's not enough to figure out how to get some for yourself, mm -hmm. right? We have to figure out how to dismantle the system that says some people aren't good enough. And that's, that's a trickier thing than, um, than just, you know, how do I demand my particular right to humanity and learn to put on a little makeup and dress right and mm -hmm. get privileges. Yeah. Yeah. And that it kind of reminds me of the being part of culture, what culture creates us and we, you know, are working to create it right back to. That's right. I think the more open you could be to kind of challenge those all those teachings and those assumptions like you were doing in your Maryland story. Um, and I think that opens up to less fear and just a willingness to kind of move yourself forward in whatever direction toward your body peace and freedom yeah. is next yeah. for you. Yeah. Very good. Well, this has been a wonderful conversation. I would love to end on just a piece of advice from you that you would give to anyone who is trying to practice self-compassion or body kindness and really trying to find that an inner caregiver voice that is just unconditionally there um, for them as a friend and as a listener and kind of willing to go through through life with them. What's What's one thing that you would recommend? Well, I guess just, um, you know, remembering that we, we get, <laughs> we get the world we want and the life we want by practicing, by practicing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was just talking to my son on the phone a couple of days ago and he was saying how he started doing yoga again after a few years of not, and that he was lamenting the fact that, you know, he'd let it go for the last couple of years and a triangle pose really feels great. Why hasn't he been doing it more often? And I said, sweetie, why not just stick with a triangle pose feels great? Mm. Because the fact is you are doing it now. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That's all. <laughs> be, be, with, be with what is. Like, isn't that wonderful? A triangle pose feels great. Yeah. I love that. The, the presence and just be, just to be here right now. And hopefully folks will be there and there being Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a beautiful place to beautiful place to come. And we do have the two retreats in June. Um, so if a person wanted to come to the BodyWise retreat and then take two days to see a little bit more of the island, come back again and do the yoga retreat, um, that'd be a nice way to spend two weeks. Mm -hmm. And or you can come to and there's a there's a discount if you came to both, but you could just come to one retreat five days and uh and uh see how see how it is for you. That's so wonderful. Where can folks go to learn more about you and, and these retreats and all that good stuff? Yeah. So just my name, Kimberly Dark, and that's D-A-R-K, like light and dark. It's it's my father's name. I came about it in the usual way. <laughs> uh, people people always wonder. It, yeah, it's KimberlyDark.com, and you can click there on a tab that says in person and or live events or something like that. 
I think it says in person and there will be information on uh, the performances I do, but then there's also another tag for retreats. And so both of the retreats are there with pricing and all the info you need. There's also a tab there called writing and there's lots of essays that are just clickable to read. Um, So that's an easy thing. And there's information on the books as well. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, Rebecca, thanks for doing this podcast. It's wonderful. And that's our show. The podcast is made possible with support from listeners. Please donate to help offset production costs at gofundme.com slash bodykindness. And please rate and review the show when you have a moment. It really matters. Let's keep the conversations going on Facebook. Search Body Kindness and request to join the group for Body Kindness readers and listeners. Have a question for us to answer on a future episode? Visit bodykindnessbook.com slash question. Body Kindness books and audiobooks are available wherever books are sold. To request a signed print copy, visit bodykindnessbook.com slash order. For other questions about this podcast, please email info at bodykindnessbook.com.